What is up my new Vim friends? Today we're going to be talking about snacks in Vim and basically how you can get your head around what is included in this bunch of plugins that Bulky has put together for us. I'm going to look at a few of them. There's a lot to dive into and so I want to incorporate a few at a time. I'll probably make several videos going through all the different ones that I find valuable. It's probably not going to be all of them because let's face it like I don't need all of those plugins and configure them all the time but I want to show you which ones I find valuable and also I feel like it's a little hard to understand exactly what each of these plugins is doing so I'd like to go over that as well. If this is your first time on the channel then welcome. My name is Andrew and I like to do these NeoVim videos as well as other tech videos. If you like the content, leave a comment and like and subscribe to the video so that others can see it and we'll jump into snacks.invim. All right, to get started, let's talk about what this thing is. So this was released a few months ago and it's a collection of some small quality of life plugins for NeoVim, which are developed by Folky, the author of many other plugins, as well as the LazyVim NeoVim distribution. Folky is always improving upon his work and enhancing his own distribution as well as providing many of these amazing plugins to the community. So if you have not checked out some of his other ones, then you should definitely check out his GitHub page and see all the ones that he's authored. For this video, I'm gonna walk through some of the changes and the plugins that I'm gonna use and how to configure them. If you haven't checked out the video on how to configure lazy.invim, then check that out in the top right hand corner. If you wanna check out a link to my own configuration that I keep up to date, then there's a link in the description for my GitHub. There's a whole lot of plugins inside of snacks.invim and so I didn't want to overhaul my entire config overnight. I wanted to pick and choose a few that I knew that were going to be really easy to configure and ones that I'd see immediate value from. So for me if we go into our config I have this invim directory and if we open up our own config then this will pop open. You can see one of the dashboards. This is the new dashboard from snacks.invim and if we go into our snacks invim file. All right, inside of our snacks.lua file, you'll see that I have a bunch of different options in config and we'll go through each one of those. Let me collapse some of these. I use UFO InVim, which is a really great tool to be able to collapse and expand folds. So I can go down here and hit ZA to collapse and open them. So let's get started with one of them. So big file, this one I have enabled. Anytime a file that is larger than the configured size is opened, then it will attach to the buffer and prevent things like your LSP and tree sitter so that NeoVim doesn't bog down and, and can't load the file. The default is 1.5 megabytes, which you can configure, but I started out with this one because it seems like just a nice value add and I don't have a plugin that handles this already. The next one I have is indent. So this one adds these little guidelines so that you can see how far in your indents are. If you don't like this or you have a different plugin that accomplishes this, feel free, but I didn't have anything. And so this seemed like a nice one that I could play around with and experiment out of the gate. The next plugin that we can talk about is this quick file right here. And so if you open up NeoVim with a singular file, so if you did invim and bob.txt, then it'll defer loading those plugins until it loads up the buffer first. So it gets you into that buffer to quickly edit it, which is pretty nice in my opinion, because usually when you have a single file, usually it's like a config file or something, then you can jump in and edit it really quickly and save your changes and get back to what you were doing. I'm still experimenting with the rename plugin, so I'll have that one in a future video. If you also like seeing things written in text, then I always include a written article in the description. So go check that out and you can read this yourself and copy the config into your own config or check out my GitHub like I mentioned. But this one uh, I don't have configured and tested at the moment. The dashboard which we saw earlier, I have that configured here. You can configure this all kinds of different ways. Uh, I will leave a link in the description. Folky has actually requested everybody share their different dashboard configurations. And so there's a link on GitHub under an issue I believe where everybody has shared all their different configurations. So Check that out and this might be a cool way to update your own config if you like something out of that list. The one that I really like, so I have this header that I really value and enjoy seeing. I've adapted a couple of the key bindings. I copied this and have little icons so that you can see it in the beginning and have different actions that execute whenever you hit that keystroke. So for me, I'm actually also experimenting with the new picker out of Snacks. I'm curious if I can replace Telescope and I'm gonna do a comparison video between Telescope and that new picker because Folky did change LazyVim to actually use that new picker. So I wanna explore that and see if it's really as fast as a lot of people are saying that it is. After we 
look at these different key bindings, then you can see these different sections. So these are the sections that are configured from top to bottom. So we have the header and then the key section that shows all the different key bindings and things that you can use. And then I have a recent files and how long the startup time was. So if we go back out here and we open up the dashboard again, then you can see all of those in that order. So the header at the top and then the keys that show all the different options and icons and then the recent files. This one's really cool because you can hit a number and so you can hit like one and it'll take you right back to wherever that buffer was. So I've used that a lot to get back into a file if I'm editing it and I had to quit NeoVim to like update my config or something. So I really like that option. The last plugin that I'm using right now today is the Zen Mode plugin, which will dim all the surrounding code that is not in your context and also get rid of like all these different things on the left-hand side, like for UFO or your line numbers, and you can toggle all of that. This one, this UFO one is custom. And so I'll show you how to configure that if you're also a UFO user. These other ones, you can basically whenever you go into Zen mode, then these toggle on or off depending on when you're in it or not. Like the other ones, you enable this as a plugin. And then here's the config that you toggle for this UFO one. If we have a new toggle here. So this is a configuration inside of that snacks.invim. So I require snacks and then we set up this new toggle. And basically I'm checking the state and the state is grabbed out of this require UFO inspect, which this will give us a Lua table and then we can check it out. If the table is not there, then we want to enable it, which does all these other enabling things, which was similar to the other Zen mode plugin that I used to have. And then whenever it's actually on, then we wanna disable it and we can do this side of it. And so for us, if we wanted to enable this, we can do Lua and then snacks dot Zen. And we'll call this and then you can see we're in Zen mode. If we jump to like this, you can see that it dims. And so you can see the the dimming goes down into just these smaller bits so that you can focus on the sections of the code that you want to use. I have this map to a different key mapping. So if we do leader BZ, then it'll take us back and we can toggle again, leader BZ, leader BZ. And that I have configured up here for this snacks.zen. So another way to configure your key maps for this snacks.invim plugin. The other ones that I hold from other configs is this snacks buff delete, delete all and other. And so these will delete the buffer that you're currently in or delete other buffers that are not your current one or you can just delete all of them. So I liked these and it also gives you a nice little prompt. And if you have unsaved changes, then it will prompt you to save those changes before you close that buffer, which is really helpful. Those are all these different snacks.invim plugins that I'm currently using. Again, I'll make future videos for other ones that I'm still exploring and that picker that is gonna be compared against Telescope for me. If you have some of the plugins that don't really make sense to you or you have questions about, leave a comment and I will explore them and see if I can give you some better answers and hopefully make a video about that to help others. I think this is pretty fresh. Uh, I, I personally found the documentation a little lacking, so I intend to hopefully add to that documentation for snacks.invim and help others to see the value in some of these small quality of life plugins that Folky has written for us. Thank you again for watching, and I appreciate everybody that has watched all these videos and continues to engage with the content. I really appreciate y'all, and it's really what keeps me going. So thank you, everybody, and I will see you in the next one.